Barakata Yehawa, Barakata Yavashai, by Shem Raka Kodash, Barakatom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yehawa by Shem Yavashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule and teach well, and peace and salutations to Yaakim out there pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Rahaya with another video, and I'm going to start it off with Luke chapter 10, verse 23 to 24. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And this was Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, speaking to his disciples in the past and telling them how lucky they were to see the first coming of the Messiah. And on a spiritual level, Yahweh Shai is speaking to his modern day disciples, the men of the Lord, chiefly through GMS or Great Millstone, who are diligently out there on the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this. Yahweh is telling us how blessed we are to be living in the last seconds of these last days and to see these end times prophecies begin to come to their fulfillment. We're seeing the downfall of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Everything that Esau, Edom worked for and loves is falling apart right before his eyes. We're seeing uh, the, the elect of the nation of Israel, or you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans waking up to your identity and coming back to your power. We're seeing these end times events such as earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilences, the uproars of the people in the world, these nations beginning to turn against nations, which is going to lead to those race wars and these kingdoms rising against kingdoms such as the U.S. against China and Russia or uh, Israel against Iran. We're seeing that we're getting closer and closer to the mandatory implementation of the mark of the beast, which is that RFID NFC microchip implant. Information's coming out daily on the microchip implant and how society's moving towards a cashless system. Yahweh has shown his face in the sky on two different occasions. Chariot sightings are increasing. And what I'll be dealing with in this video, that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, or that war of Armageddon in that Middle Eastern region, and this past weekend, the state of Israel did several strikes in Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. And as it says in Jeremiah 49 and 20, it's going to be the state of Israel which is going to instigate this battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. This is Jeremiah 49 and 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he had taken against Edom, you Edomites, so-called white people, and his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman, Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock being those Amalekite Edomites over in the land of Israel right now, posing as Israelis, posing as the children of the Most High, your imposters, your Edomites. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. And as I just said, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Israel is provoking a war with Iran because they want the U.S. to be dragged in and destroy Iran for them so they can be the top hegemon in the region. But once they uh, instigate a war with Iran, things aren't going to go as planned. The U.S. will get dragged in, but also uh, Russia and China are going to get dragged in on the side of uh, Iran. That's going to kick off that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, or that, and it's going to all culminate into a nuclear-armed World War III where... Uh, the allies of the U.S. are going to turn against it and Israel and ally themselves with Russia. And they're all going to shoot their nuclear missiles onto uh, the United States as well as the state of Israel. Now I'm going to get into some articles to uh, document what happened over this past weekend and to show that it's just a stepping stone towards this battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. My first article is on antiwar.com and the title reads, Netanyahu hits Iraq. Syria and Lebanon in desperate re-election bid, Israel ramps up region-wide aggression to spin as targeting Iran, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. The weekend marked a precipitous escalation in Netanyahu's promise to uh, attack all perceived enemies. From Saturday evening into late Sunday afternoon, Israel carried out strikes against three separate nations, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon, 
By Monday morning, he had also attacked forces from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, as well as Palestinians from the PFLP slash GC. That's a lot of enemies to wage war against all at once. Rumors of Israeli attacks against targets in Iraq over the last few weeks came to a head last week when U.S. and Israeli officials confirmed that the attacks were taking place. This led to some complaints from Iraqi officials, but Israel is hardly backing away from this policy. Indeed, with Israel's election less than a month away and Prime Minister Netanyahu and his allies trailing substantially in most polls, it appears the policy is to escalate its attacks across the region, hoping to secure more votes from the hawkish right. And you, uh, gutterat Israelis can expect more than just uh, trying to secure votes from the hawkish right. The biggest attacks came Saturday when Israel launched a series of attacks against a village near the Syrian capital of Damascus. The attacks were drone bombings uh, with Israeli drones laden with explosives flying into the target, crashing and detonating. Israel attacking Syria is common enough, but the real news was the Israeli military commenting directly, claiming they'd attacked an Iranian site intending to preempt an Iranian attack on northern Israel on Thursday. Iran denied everything, including that they've been hit in the strikes. It makes sense why Netanyahu's government would want to make this the case, and while he's got mounting political opposition, he likely believes war with Iran is still a platform that would benefit him in the election. Indeed, if the war actually was ongoing against Iran and basically all Shiites, it would probably guarantee his re-election. But it didn't stop with an attack on Syria, nominally on Iran. On Sunday, Israel carried out attacks against the Lebanese capital of Beirut, targeting Hezbollah. Israeli drones also slammed into western Iraq, killing at least one member of a Shiite militia there. That brought Israel into engagements in three distinct countries targeting Iraqi Shiite militias, Hezbollah, Syrian, and Iranian forces, adding a fifth faction. Early Monday morning, Israel attacked a Palestinian base in northern Lebanon. That's almost everyone in the region that Israel could attack, but this week we'll probably see a continuation of such strikes. Israel has also indicated an interest in starting to attack the Shiites in northern Yemen, even though they are not the same type of Shiites, so that too is likely to be a priority target. So far, there has been no reaction from Israel's opposition parties, and it puts them in an awkward position, as historically, attacking anything is relatively popular in Israel because you Edomites are bloodthirsty savages and it is considered unthinkable for the opposition to chime in on that in anything but enthusiastic support. And what nation just happened to uh, condone these strikes that Israel made in Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon? None other than the United States. And this is from uh, uk.reuters.com. Pompeo voices support for Israel after Israeli airstrikes in Syria. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, drawing out the United States in their defense when all hell breaks loose. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, in a call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu about Israeli airstrikes in Syria, expressed Washington's support for Israel's right to defend itself from the threat posed by Iran's Revolutionary Guard, the State Department said on Sunday. The secretary and the prime minister discussed how Iran is leveraging its foothold in Syria to threaten Israel and its neighbors, the State Department said in a statement, which is all bullshit. The only reason Iran is in Syria is because Bashar al-Assad asked for Iran to assist them in their uh, civil war, which was instigated by Israel, the US, and other European powers first by starting those false flag anti-government protests and then funding their ISIS and Al-Qaeda mercenary forces to overthrow Assad. Now to my next article, also on antiwar.com. Iraq, Lebanon, see Israeli attacks as a declaration of war. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, 
such as Iraq and Lebanon declaring that Israeli strikes are a declaration of war, Iraqi president, sovereignty and well-being of Iraqis are a red line, a flurry of weakened attacks by Israeli forces hit various targets in Iraq, Lebanon, and Syria. Syria is attacked so commonly that it's gone virtually without reaction, but Lebanon and Iraq both issued separate statements saying they view what happened as a declaration of war. Lebanese PM Sahad Hariri warned of the risk of a dangerous escalation and called on diplomats to do something to stop things getting worse, Salakia. Israeli forces on the border are on high alert, though there is no sign of any fighting there so far. Iraq's ruling coalition also said they consider the attack a declaration of war on Iraq, adding that they ultimately hold the U.S. fully responsible for the Israeli aggression despite the U.S. disavowing involvement. Top Iraqi officials, as well as the leadership of the PMF militias, met on Monday related both to Israel's Sunday attack and to what have been a spate of Israeli attacks on Iraqi soil over the past several weeks, all targeting militia forces. Israel has long accused Iraqi militias of being Iranian forces, it's getting to be a joke at this point, and is keen on starting a proxy war in Iraq. They've done materially the same thing in Syria and in Lebanon. Iraq's presidential office issued a statement saying that they consider Iraqi sovereignty and the well-being of Iraqi civilians to be a red line and vowed to take all necessary steps to deter further aggressors. Now to my last article also on anti-war. Netanyahu urges international community to act to protect Israel. Again, the least of the flock shall draw them out. Netanyahu urges international community to be drawn out to the Valley of Jehoshaphat to protect Israel from all these nations that they've been starting uh, conflicts with. After attacking several countries, Netanyahu warns of mounting tensions. After a 48-hour period over the weekend, during which Israeli forces attacked five distinct factions in three separate countries, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is now seeing Israel at serious risk. Netanyahu is now demanding that the international community, mainly the United States of America, act immediately to halt uh, Iran from its attacks on Israel. Notably, those targets of Israel were mostly Shiites, and therefore Israel perceives them as mostly in league with Iran, but there were no attacks against Israel over the weekend. Indeed, the only hint of an Iranian attack on Israel was the Israeli military's allegation that Iran was going to do so, which they created as a justification for their Saturday attack in Syria. Rather, if Israel is facing substantial risk of attack at all at this point, it would surely be from a group like Hezbollah looking to retaliate for Israeli attacks against them. The weakened salvos clearly put Israel at risk and potentially on the path toward a regional war, which is going to happen, that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Given that, it takes some nerve for Netanyahu to demand the international community to do something on his behalf. It may, however, point toward a very specific endgame he is working toward. The past couple of Israeli invasions of the Gaza Strip went poorly from a political standpoint for Netanyahu because in both cases, the Israeli press spun them as Palestinian aggression but peace deals were worked out before a popular bloody war even got off the ground. In this case, Netanyahu may be trying the same thing, hoping he can get some political points in the lead up to the election and hoping that he can get international diplomats to keep it from escalating into a practical problem and then try to get more credit for being able to aggress against most of his neighbors with impunity. So as you Akim can see, just over this past weekend, things have escalated quite a bit. This whole situation's one wrong move from going completely haywire. And the reason that all this is happening is because Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh is judging and punishing you heathen nations for touching the apple of his eye, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the true children of Israel. 
You've committed iniquity against them, not just in the past, but all the way up until today. Chiefly, you Edomites, the so-called white people, those Amalekite Edomites who called themselves Jewish and Israeli, one of the main ones who funded the transatlantic slave trade. This is Joel chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 9 through 14. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, which the men of the Lord are doing by going out there on the highways and byways pushing this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this. Prepare war, war with Iran, that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, that war of Armageddon, that nuclear armed World War III. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. And what do we just read in one of those articles? that Iraq and Lebanon said those Israeli strikes against them were tantamount to a declaration of war, but don't expect things to get really bad until the mark of the beast, which is the microchip implant, is mandatorily implemented and Israel instigates that war with Iran. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong, such as Iran, who sees that Iranian that Slaki, who sees that British oil tanker in the Strait of Hormuz, as well as threatening to wipe Israel off the face of the earth and telling the U.S. that if they go to war against them, that'll be the worst mistake they ever made. And the reason Iran's being so bold is that they know that once a war starts against them, that Russia's going to come to their defense. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, the United States, the state of Israel, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Iran, Russia, China, India, Britain, France, Germany, etc., etc., and gather yourselves together round about. Thither calls thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh, and those mighty ones are the death angels of the Most High, waiting to get the order to release all this destruction. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat means Yahweh's Shapat or Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision, and this day of, of uh, Yahweh is near, Achim. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time reading these scriptures and looking at the news and filtering the news through these scriptures to see that we're living in the last seconds of these last days that now it is high time to awake out of sleep stop being lackadaisical in this truth for now is our salvation nearer than we we believed and it truly is nearer than when we believed Achim. blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see for prophets and kings have wished to see the things that ye see it's almost over Achim. We're almost uh, in the kingdom. So now more than ever, you should be fully assured in your faith in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and have all 10 toes down in this truth, pushing this word as hard as you can to make your calling and election sure. So with this video, I hope you sincere Akim were edified. And as always, I'm going to say a Baba Ball, Kwam Yasharala. Till next time, Shalom.